This is the book of James, chapter 4, verse 6. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. I want to give all praises, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem Rakakwadash, for allowing me to be, for allowing me to do another lesson. Yahweh, who the world ignorantly calls God. Yahweh Shai is his son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. And there's no God beside them. I want to give double honors to the elder apostles and the elder bishops of Great Millstone for being faithful witnesses to the Holy Spirit, the Rakakwadash. And Shalom to the elect whom the Lord have given ears to hear. I'm the brother um, Kahan from the GMS New Jersey camp. And um, today's lesson I want to get into is the story of Hannah and how it relates to our walk today as being at the bottom of the bottom, you know, being servants of Yahweh while Yahweh shy. So this is 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 1. Now there was a certain man of Ramoth, I'm Zophim, of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah. And, um, you know, a lot of times when I read these stories, I when I read these accounts, I like to read them in my, uh, my, um, my sword app. So, you, as you see, I can stop and look at the meaning of names. And you'll see uh, why I mentioned that in a second. It says, the son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuth, an Ephraim. An Ephrathite. He had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other, Penina. Now the word Hannah goes back to the Hebrew word Chana, meaning grace. And Penina goes back to the Hebrew word, uh, what is that? Uh, Pun, Pana. Or Panun, uh, Pun, I believe it's Pana, if I'm not mistaken. Pun. Okay. So it means I'm um, Jewel. Right? So the name of the one was Grace, and the name of the other one was Jewel. It says had children, all right. So Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. And this man went up out of his city, out of his city, yearly to worship and a sacrifice unto Yahweh of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of Yahweh, were there. And when the time was that Elkanah offered. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Penina, his wife, and to all her sons and her daughters portions. But unto Hannah, he gave a worthy portion. For he loved Hannah, but Yahweh had shut up her womb. And her adversary also provoked her sore. For to make her fret, when you look up the word fret, it means to thunder, to cause, to thunder, right? It says, uh, that is to be violently agitated, right? So here it is, the wife, because in the ancient world, that was a, a badge of honor for a woman, all right? For a woman, for women to have children. All right, and it was actually uh, frowned upon for women that didn't have children. As a matter of fact, many, many times in the scriptures, as you read, like um, in the story of Jacob, 
all right, when his wives were basically fighting to see who would give him more children. <laughs> okay. But it says, but unto Hannah, he gave a worthy portion. For he loved Hannah, but Yahweh had shut up her womb. And her adversary also provoked her sore for to make her fret or to make her very, to piss her off in so many words. Because Yahweh had shut up her womb. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of Yahweh, she provoked, so she provoked her. Therefore, she wept and did not eat. All right. So this is through a process of time to where, you know, Penina, all right, um, vexed Hannah. All right, you know she was calling all types of names, whatever, you know, you know how Jake got the nicknames and shit, right? Probably provoking to talk, to talk, telling her how the Lord don't love her, or whatever the case may be. Provoking her as far as, you know, Elkanah loves me, the more he loves you, right? Which, as we see, it had to be, it was the Lord that closed up her womb, right? Because... Elkanah had many children with uh, Penina, so it wasn't Elkanah's uh, doing. You know, he wasn't infertile, whatever the case may be. It was just that, you know, she had uh, whatever particular infirmity that the Lord had put on her. All right. Nevertheless, her name was still Grace. You know? Now, um, in this, in this account, it doesn't tell you. It doesn't say... That, um, you know, I was like, like, say you have a woman or whatever, and that's what name that you give your woman. Like, that's your personal uh, name for her. So this is just her name that she was born with. Right. So here it is. She was born, you know, which little Willie brothers is following me. She was born with the name of Grace. Never, nevertheless, her life was that of, uh, uh, you know, pain and, and turmoil, so to speak. As again, in this time, you know, uh, having a child was, was very uh, admir admirable. You know, when you liken it to the men of the Lord today, as we are, uh, the scriptures say, always dying about in, in, in the Lord. All right, what's admirable today? Having a lot of women, having a lot of riches. All right. As men of the Lord, a lot of times, uh, you know, we just getting by. You know, women ain't really looking our way for the most part. But, um, let's just say, as a man of the Lord, you're not going to be the talk of the town. You're not going to be Mr. Popular. Right, we have a a a code, an ethic, to where you know we don't get shape ups, we don't line ourselves up, we keep our beards to the best of our ability. You know, scriptures say you can't cut into your beard, so it's not like a, a fashion statement. All right, so when you put all that together, you know we are also uh, fretted, you know, also constantly provoked. Nevertheless. The Lord has given us this truth, which is our grace. All right. So essentially we are uh, as Hannah, you know, fretted, uh, provoked, provoked to anger. But it says, uh, then Elkanah, her husband to, uh, then El they said Elkanah, her husband to her, Hannah, why weepest thou and why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of Yahweh. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto Yahweh and wept sore. And she vowed a vow and said, O Yahweh of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid and remember me, 
and not forget thy handmaid, but will give unto thy handmaid a man child, then I will give him unto Yahweh all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass, as she continued praying before Yahweh, that Eli marked her mouth. You know, meaning he was, well, he's going to get into it. Now, Hannah, she spake in her heart, only her lips moved. Right? So basically, Eli noticed that, like, what's going on here? I see a mouth moving, but I don't hear no words coming up. It says, For the voice was not heard, therefore Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have poured out my soul before Yahweh. Count not thy handmaid for a daughter of uh, Belial, which means a daughter of worthlessness, which again, or unprofitable, unprofitable because a woman's job, all right, was to bear children, all right? Like uh, Apostle Paul said, you know, uh, bear children, uh, care for the house, all right? Which in turn would continue on, you know, her Lord's legacy. It says, count not thy handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. Then Eli answered and said, go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. And she said, let thy handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. And they rose up in the morning early and worshipped before Yahweh, and returned and came to their house to Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah, Hannah, his wife, which means they had sex, and Yahweh remembered her. Wherefore it came to pass, when the time was come, about after Hannah had conceived that she bare a son, and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked him of Yahweh. Right, which the word Samuel goes into the Hebrew word Shammai Allah. Right, meaning basically heard of Yahweh. Shammai meaning here, and Allah means power. Heard of God. And the man Elkanah and his and his house. went up to offer unto Yahweh and the yearly sacrifice and his vow. But Hannah went not up, for she had unto her husband, for she said unto her husband, I will not go up until the child be weaned, and then I will bring him, that he may appear before Yahweh, and there abide forever. And Elkanah her husband said unto her, Do what seemeth thee good, tarry until thou hast weaned him, only, the, only Yahweh established his word. So the woman abode and gave her son suck until she had weaned him. And when she had weaned him, she took him up with her with three bullocks and one ephah of flour and a bottle of wine and brought him into the house of Yahweh in Shiloh. And the child was young. And they slew a bullock and brought the child to Eli. And she said, O oh my Lord, as thy soul liveth, my Lord, I am the woman that stood by thee here, praying unto Yahweh. For this child I prayed, and Yahweh had given me my petition, which I asked of him. Therefore, also I have lent him, meaning he, she pretty much means she's promised him to the Lord. As long as he liveth, he shall be lent to Yahweh, and he worship Yahweh there. Right? So in the grand scheme of things, she was actually more blessed than Panaya. All right. Because she she grew a man child, in which her man child, you know, uh, uh, was very important in the eyes of the Lord. I.e., this is why he has a book called, this is why we have a book in the Bible called the Book of Samuel. Right? So in the end thereof, I'll read that again. 
All right, but he giveth more grace wherefore God resisteth the proud, but he giveth grace unto the humble. Proverbs 3.34 You know, we're walking in the same steps as Yahweh Shai. You know, we're going to catch the same hell. Like Yahweh Shai said, the servant is not greater than his master. They have hated me. Therefore, they shall hate you also. Right? And um, though we are very vexed and agitated, we just got to wait and be spiritual. You know, wait and be spiritual. Like just lot vexed constantly with the filthy conversation of the wicked. What it tells us in First Peter, how basically they mock the, the prophets of the Lord, saying, "Since our fathers fell asleep, things went back to to the way they were." But you telling us things are gonna change, so it's a constant mockery, you know. Whereas our faith, you know, keeps us in a. How can I put it? Our faith keeps us in a mindset of um in a lowly mindset. Meaning our faith, you know, uh, uh, uh you know overcomes our particular worldly aspirations, you know, to where you gotta mindset, the worldly mindset is to get money, you know. To get money to build generational wealth, then you can establish yourself on this side to have a child, set your child up good, and you can die peacefully. Right? And um, that's not our mindset. Nevertheless, as I read um to Proverbs 3, right? We're gonna jump to Proverbs 3:34. It says, Surely he scorneth the scorners, but he giveth grace to the lowly. You know, and we, oh my God, bro. I, I, you brothers understand what I'm trying to say. We are patiently waiting for Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai to start judging these niggas, man. You know, we are patiently waiting <laughs> for Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai to start judging you two third niggas, man. But um, that word scorneth goes into the word to talk arrogantly, to boast. Right? So it says he scorneth the scorners. Meaning he mocks. He, he mocks those that talk arrogantly. Right? But he giveth grace. Hun. He giveth favor unto the lowly. <laughs> the wise shall inherit glory. But shame shall be the promotion of fools. Right? So as these people look for a name, you know, you we all know you got the, you know, the corny ass scoffers coming up against brothers trying to make a name for themselves. Well, hell, you, you might have a demon, you know, you're dealing with in your personal life coming up against you trying to make a name for themselves at your expense. Nevertheless, they're going to get a name as they're going to get a name, you know, through the Most High's judgment. That's going to be the dude that the Most High fucked up, you know. The dude that had a terrible accident on the job or, you know, the guy that got, 100, that got shot 187 times and made the news. That's going to be the dude that that's going to be his reward for being a scorner. And we, like I said, we, we patiently wait for that. But, um, going into, uh, again, he scorneth the scorners, all right? Or he mocks the arrogant. That's another way to say it. Samuel had the same sentiment, like, which goes to show you that she wasn't just talking on her ass, all right? She actually was speaking through the spirit. Whereas we read in 1 Samuel 2, 
1 Samuel 2 and 1. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoiceth in Yahweh. Mine horn is exalted in Yahweh. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. And you see, when Yahweh by Shimei Awashai answers our petition to bring great pain upon our enemies, we're going to be very confident. As she just said, my mouth is enlarged, right? To be or grow wide, be or grow larger, right? Real quick. Let me grab the book of Psalms, chapter 30, and verse 5. For his anger endureth but a moment, and his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And in my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. Right? So when the Lord answers our prayers, which guess what? Our prayers, the elect's prayers is in line with prophecy. Right? So when the Lord answers our prayers, Lord, will we be of the elect? All right. To bring, as Yahweh Shah said, um, our Father which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Essentially bring order to earth through your son Yahweh Shah. So it says, my heart rejoiceth in Yahweh, my horn is exalted in Yahweh. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. So again, you could just imagine, yes, yeah, she only had one child, but that one child outweighed the multitudes of sons and daughters that her adversary had. All right. Like the scriptures um say, one that is just is better than a thousand. Let me grab that one. because I feel like. I believe that goes uh, pretty perfectly with this uh, example here. It says, um, and it doesn't tell you, you know, whether uh, uh, Penina, what's her name? Pina or Penina, you know, children were uh, wicked, you know, but the point is that they were not exalted, especially in a book of life, in this book. That was given to us to learn how to, you know, pre serve the Lord. They weren't exalted, you know, as Samuel. The Lord didn't even mention their names. If I'm not mistaken, well, as we read the, you know, it just said that P Pina had, you know, sons and daughters. It didn't mention their names. So it says, Sirach 16 and 1, desire not a multitude of unprofitable children. Let me uh, jump straight to the point. So Rock 16 or Ecclesiastes chapter 16 verse 4. For by one that have understanding shall the city be replenished. But the kindred of the wicked shall speedily become desolate. Right. So, um, you know, Hannah was blessed. She was definitely blessed. Um, Kind of reminds me of the scripture. Uh. Well, well, and I could find it. Bear with me. I want to say it's in like. I believe it might be in Psalms where it speaks about. Though uh, thy beginnings were small. I can't exactly remember how it was worded. All right, Job. Call Lord Yahweh by Shimei Job chapter 8. In verse 5. And Job. Job would know. When you read the story of Job. Which Job means. I or affliction. He would. He would. Uh, I would say he would be. A good candidate to speak on a situation such as this. If thou wouldest seek unto God. Be times. And make thy supplication to the almighty. All right, so like this is actually not Job speaking, my fault. But um, nevertheless, his wisdom given about serving Yahweh Shai. 
It says, Job chapter 8, verse 5. If thou wouldest seek unto God be times and make thy supplication to the Almighty, if thou wert pure and upright, surely now he would awake for thee and make the habitation of thy righteousness prosperous, which the Lord did for Job. As we read throughout the as we read the difference between Job, what the first, second, third, around the beginning chapters of Job, all right, and in comparison to the end thereof. Like it also tells us in the book of James. All right. Look, base, basically how we should look at the end of Job. All right. How he was blessed in the end thereof. So it says, uh, James, uh, Job, chapter 8, verse 6. If thou wilt pure and upright, surely now he would awake for thee. And now, and make the habitation of thy righteousness prosperous. Right. Which essentially, um, Hannah lived. You know how a mother lives through their son. All right, and she was she was prosperous, in that she had born a man of the Lord. Right, she had born a man of the Lord to a man of the Lord at that. <laughs> and it says, "And make the habitation of thy righteousness prosperous, though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end should greatly increase." Right. And Hannah, you know, she was she was she was talking her shit, <laughs> so to speak, you know. But um, hey, it, it was evident that the Lord was dealing with her. There is none holy as Yahweh, for there is none beside thee, neither is there any rock like our God. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth, for Yahweh is a God of knowledge. And by him actions are weighed. The bows of mighty men are broken. And they that stumble are girded with strength. You see, so the most high can give you prosperity or adversity. As we read on, they that will fall have hired out themselves for bread. All right. So at one point he was at the top of the world. To next he was under the ground, so to speak. He was in a, a lowly beggar, hellish condition. And they that were hungry cease, so that the barren had born seven, and she that have many children is wax feeble. Yet how it killeth and maketh alive, he bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. Right? And this is a book on humility. This is a, a definitely a book on humility. Right? Because we don't know what tomorrow may bring. You know, which us and not. Us in the spirit of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah, you definitely understand that. Case in point, you know, you could be on fire doing lessons, you know, and then the next, you know, one, two, three days straight, then the next day, the spirit is not on you so much, or you see it, I can't, you know, <laughs> how the spirit jumps on you, jumps on another brother, you may not have nothing to say for a little bit, then the spirit jumps back on you, right? So this is also, like I said, a spirit of or uh, words of that teaches us humility. The Lord maketh the poor rich and he bringeth low and he lifteth up. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory for the pillars of the earth are Yahweh's. And he hath set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints. And the wicked shall be silent. In darkness. For by strength shall no man prevail. Alright, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Lord willing, you acting edified. Shalom to the elect.